Welcome everyone into the first edition of the Know Her Name podcast. My name is Zach Gagan with Kentucky Sports Radio. I am your producer for this brand new podcast that we are starting um, on the KSR Podcast Network. It is going to be a women's basketball focused show. We haven't done anything like that yet with KSR. So we're going to start kicking things off here about midseason. You know, we're a few games into SEC play. Uh, the goal of this podcast here is going to be to talk about the Kentucky team in general, kind of what things have been going on, looking ahead to the future, uh, previewing games. Um, a big thing that we're going to be doing is uh, player interviews or coaches interviews. Today for our first episode, we're going to have about a 15 to 20 minute interview with Blair Green, Harlan County's own. Uh, we pre-recorded that a couple of days ago, so we'll we'll sneak that into the middle of this podcast for you all. Great, some great questions that she uh uh, was asked and some even better answers. She talks a lot about her NIL deals, uh, overcoming the Achilles, getting engaged to CJ Frederick, things like that. But to start off with our first episode here, we're going to just kind of pre or, uh, recap kind of how the season has gone for Kentucky. Um, obviously, things are not off to a great start here, but the season is not even close to over. There's a big, big matchup tonight here in Lexington against the number one undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks who are beating SEC, SEC teams by an average of 30 points or 29.5 if we want to kind of kick them down a little bit. So we'll say it like that. Um, but as you can probably, or as you probably might hear, I am the producer here. I am not uh, going to be the co-host. We are going to be uh, having two of uh, uh, people I've gotten to know pretty well over the last, well, Grant Grubbs, who some of you all might know from KSR, has been covering the women's team for about two years. He's one of our co-hosts. And then Alex White is going to be joining him. She's been doing a lot of Louisville podcasts. Uh, but she's uh, switched over to the good side here, and she's going to be um, sticking with us in Kentucky and talking about some Kentucky stuff. Ignore my hair here. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, YouTube podcasts or putting this on YouTube and on Spotify and iTunes. Um, again, this is going to be called the Know Her Name podcast. It's a shout out to our good friend Tanya Witt, who has founded the Rise Up Sports Media uh, platform, which you know tries to bring more focus to women's sports, particularly basketball in the high school area in Kentucky. Uh, so without further ado, I will kick it over to our hosts here, Grant Grubbs and Alex White. Alex, take it away. All right. So I guess just to get things started, um, since we are, um, like Zach said, about halfway through the season, um, a few games into SEC play, uh, just kind of get started talking about the kind of some of the New faces, which is a big part of this team. Um, 10 of the our 15 players on our roster are actually new faces, whether it be freshmen or transfers. So, um, Grant, what is your thoughts as far as all the new faces you've seen this year? Uh, I would definitely say the new faces are kind of, you know, showing uh, the adjustment period. And if you would ask me maybe eight games ago how it was going when we were 7-1, I'd say they look really good and we're doing great. Now that kind of youth is really starting to show through. Um, lost seven of the team's past eight and our own foreign conference play. So, you know, it's going to take some time to adjust, uh, which has been obvious. But head coach Kyra Elzey has said throughout she's not looking for perfection. She's looking for progression. Definitely. And I think that's like a big, a big thing that a lot of people on the outside maybe don't see when they just look at um, Kentucky and how the season's been going. Um, mm -hmm. Not always. I mean, if you look at the whole college scheme, despite the transfer portal, uh, I don't think there's very many teams that probably have um, as many fresh faces as what Kentucky does this year. Yeah. So it's basically like a fresh start, um, even though the five that are returners obviously have been a big part of the team, but Definitely yeah. hard. <laughs> well, even, you know, with those five returners, it's important to note that I think it's 70% of the team scoring from last season uh, transferred or obviously Ryan Howard went to the WNBA. And, you know, just mentioning that name, you get chills because it's she was the face of the program for four years. Uh, one of the best players in the nation and the WNBA rookie of the year. So losing her, any team's going to take a hit no matter how good the coach or the incoming players are. Yeah, definitely. Definitely agree with that. And then I know we've kind of reached on it, but kind of going more into the start of our season where we did start off pretty well, um, seven and one to start the season. Yeah. Didn't face too many challenges, though, in those um, the first eight games. Um, but we did. I mean, we did play really well against a really, really good Virginia Tech team. So yeah. early I on, it looked great. <laughs> the rated, I think, number 13 in the country last I checked and yeah, I mean, in that first quarter of that game, it didn't look great, but 
our defense carried us through and we gave them a fight right there until the end. So I don't know. What have you, I guess, you know, focusing on just those first eight games, what did you kind of take away and what did excite you about this season? I think honestly, a big part of it was I was kind of disappointed in the first the initial game, the season opener. Um, mm-hmm. I knew Radford was a, a notch below us, no matter what, where yeah. you, how you look at it. Um, and so us struggling against them really concerned me. I was kind of scared that we were going to struggle against some of the lower competition even yeah. um, this season after that game. So I think a big positive is just that they kind of fought back from that and the, that start. I mean, that can make or break you. So I think they were able to get a great start going after that. Um, obviously, we still won that game, but it definitely could have been um, an automatic downfall to the season because then you had multiple um, games of competition that were the ones that we should win and we actually did take care of business in those um, I think just they the way they responded really um, really made me have a lot of hope for the rest of the season obviously um, the last eight games have not gone how yeah. we would want but I love the way they responded just after starting with such a struggle for sure and, you know, even up to that last game, if we're splitting the season in two halves, uh, that eighth game, I believe, of the year was against Minnesota. And, uh, you know, that's a tough win. That was their first true road game. And they won it, you know, it was a tight one, but they pulled it out by six points, 80 to 74. To go into an opposing arena like that in a big Power Five conference is a big win. Um, it made me feel good moving into Louisville and some of the upcoming games after that. But obviously, I don't know if that, uh, you know, made them lose focus a little bit, but things didn't pan out the way we wanted. Definitely. And I mean, Louisville, I Louisville, I was still kind of torn at that point because, I mean, they did start off a top 10 team in the nation. Um, Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of expected really big things of them. Even I mean, they even thought that they would be a contender for the title this year. So um, for the way that we fought against them in the beginning stages of that game, I really t- was thinking of a lot of positive stuff I saw out there. And then um, obviously they pulled away at the end, but I really, with rivalry games, I really thought maybe because we fought so hard, um, that would be almost a, almost a good thing going into, um, yeah. especially Murray state who, I mean, I, I don't know if I want to talk about that game, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Unfortunately, even if we skip that, we have Florida Gulf Coast, uh, Missouri, Arkansas. So, yeah, things haven't been great. Um, You know, losing that Murray State, I definitely think was a turning point for this team where maybe some of that early confidence they held ever since then, they've been fighting to get back to it. Um, After Murray, they dropped another to not a very good Florida Gulf Coast team, rallied with a close win against Ohio, and then we hit SEC play. Yeah. Um, where we're own four um, yeah. <laughs> recently falling to a really, really good LSU team. Um, I don't know, as, as looking at the SEC play and that change of talent, what did you notice from the team and the difference in their play? Um, I noticed a lot more sloppiness. Um, we weren't taking care of the ball nearly as much once we got into SEC play. Um, we struggled with it early on, but I guess, I guess kind of the level of competition with teams like Florida Gulf Coast, Murray State, um, Ohio, teams like that. Um, I guess it wasn't as obvious because you can still do things that kind of overcome that. But I mean, it, turnovers have been a problem, but it, it's just been really noticeable once we got into SEC play. Yeah, I believe it was 27 turnovers against Arkansas, I think it was. I mean, yeah, you're just not going to win games that way. And yeah. LZ knows it. Uh, the fans know it. It's tough. And it seems like every single game that they clean some aspect up, then something else falls through, whether it's their three point shooting, uh, you know, defense, it can be anything. And yeah. speaking of their shooting, it's it's been a rough year. Yes. Um, there's no way around it. They're shooting 41 percent from the field, 27 percent from three. Um, I don't know. Was this what you expected coming into the season from this team? No, not at all. Um, honestly, I just. I mean, I remember Maddie Shear in high school, just how well she could shoot the ball. Um, she's always been a kind of pass first kind of player, but her skills have always shined. Like even when she was at the high school level, um, won the 2020 Miss Kentucky Basketball Award, um, really just because of how well she 
she controlled the floor um, from a point guard perspective. So she really has always been a pass first, but in high school, it was like any second that she had a half second to get her shot off from deep. I felt like it was an automatic going in sort of thing. So I thought adding her would just add a whole other aspect to the outside shooting. And then I thought that we had returners that are really good outside shooters. Yes. So um, I no, I definitely did not expect that our shooting to be um, that where it's at right now um, by any means. And, and, you know, and an early struggle is kind of expected sometimes, but with veterans like Blair Green and Emma King, who are supposed to be these great shooters, you just, you kind of can't wrap your head around what's going on. And Elsie believes it is a head thing. It's a mental thing. So uh, I'm sure these games with LSU and South Carolina back to back isn't uh, the best thing to help with that mental side of things. Yeah, definitely not. Especially, I mean, LSU and South Carolina are two legitimate contenders for this year's title. Like, they both have a great shot of making it to the final four. Mm -hmm. So to play teams like that when you're really trying to get back into the groove of things definitely does not help um doesn't doesn't help get us to where we're wanting to go. Um, but kind of the hope I think is just to grow from those games and find growth even in those kind of games. And that's really the question mark I have for tonight's game against South Carolina. For sure. Uh, you know, before we head into the South Carolina game, um, you know, you mentioned growth. What or who, I should say, have you seen grow? Uh, I know you mentioned Maddie Shear. I mean, last game against LSU, she played a great game. She had 22 points, uh, three of five from beyond the arc, which is a huge step forward for her. Uh, what other players have you seen kind of step up, especially now that the schedule's gotten tougher? Yeah, I think Maddie, too, like I said, she's always been a pass first player. So I think her kind of stepping into more of a scoring role, too. I mean, I think we're starting to see like that's part of the progression she's making right now is kind of thinking more of score first mentality. Um, she's still going to be probably one of the leaders for assists. Um, she's our leading rebounder as a point guard. So that's crazy. But um, she, she's pretty much leads in every category. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like, I mean, besides scoring, you, you basically just look to Maddie Shear. Absolutely. And so, yeah. So I think, um, I mean, she's definitely keeps growing and growing in a different position than probably what she's used to. I mean, Oregon had so many scores around her that really her job was just distributing it. And when she was getting shots, they were wide open because they had four other shooters on the perimeter um, that the defense was focusing on. So that's a big difference for her. And I think that what you said is so true that she's really coming into her own. Um, the one I've been super impressed with lately is Kennedy Cambridge, a freshman um, out of Tennessee. Um, I think every time she's come into the game, she makes some sort of positive um, impact for the game. And that I've been very impressed just by her intensity, the way that when she comes in, the intensity picks up really has stood out to me a lot. For sure. And, you know, we've needed that with Jada Walker kind of spiraling a little bit these past few games, having a backup like that with Kennedy is huge. Um, and, you know, she didn't even play until I think the seventh game of the season. Yeah. <laughs> so for her to make this, jump so quick has been insane to see and like you said even if she's not necessarily scoring or putting up stats I bet her plus minus is fantastic because she is always making a positive impact on the game absolutely yeah I definitely I can't agree more with that I mean she is just it's you it's always telling when you can automatically see that as soon as a player comes in mm -hmm. and I think that's really what she's done and to do that as a true freshman is beyond impressive um especially when you do have a group of I mean despite there being a lot of new faces a lot of those are transfers so I mean relatively um older group that she's doing it with when she comes into the game so um I just think the way that she's her confidence um has kept continued to grow and I think she's really continued to make a bigger and bigger impact as the season's gone on and sure. then I think <laughs> what was obvious and I think Arkansas kind of made it obvious when we had Robin Benton out, I think <laughs> she, you can tell she is our bucket getter. Um, yeah. She's who we need to put points on the board. Saying she's important is an understatement. We were, it, it was disastrous, torturous to watch that game. Uh, if you were rooting for Kentucky, uh, Robin Benton, even though she doesn't necessarily have the best efficient efficiency, she just can score at a level that nobody else on this team can. 
and she's not scared to put them up, which a lot of these players are, um, which is a huge boost. So she's bound. I think every game she's played in this season, she scored double figures. And I would say she's kind of the key piece for this to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially on the offensive end. I mean, yeah, we definitely saw it against Arkansas, but it's like, I mean, I think she has, she's taken like 60, 70 more shots than anyone else on the team, but there's a reason. And I think that game really illustrated it even more. So it's like, even if she isn't shooting at a super high percentage, we still need her to get those shots up because it's so many points off the board when she's not shooting. Absolutely. And, you know, we mentioned those three players, but Kentucky will need everybody and maybe a little miracle to even have a chance against number one South Carolina so unless you have anything else do you want to hop into that yeah yeah definitely and now we will transition into a quick 20 minutes quick 20 minute interview with Blair Green where we uh, ask her a a bunch of different questions that we mentioned earlier about her NIL deals uh, how the season has gone recovering from her Achilles etc so we will dive into that right now and then get into our preview of South Carolina all right. Well, I guess we'll just get started automatically. So um, first off, how is it being back after um, facing an injury last year that kind of mm-hmm. took away um, what was supposed to be your senior season? Yeah, um, it's awesome to be back. I mean, having to sit out a whole year. I mean, that was hard just having to sit on the bench and watch all of my some of like my best friends just go out there and just play without me. But they like really brought me along every step of the way and made me feel really like I had a big part of the team. But yeah, it feels great to be back out there. I mean, I think I thought I was just going to come out there and it's just going to be like brand new again, but it did take some time just to like kind of get comfortable again and everything. But I'm just reminding myself just to give myself some grace while I'm out there. And it's just, it's coming along step by step. I'm just focusing on getting 1% better each day. So, yeah. As big a news as kind of all the stuff on the basketball court is, obviously there's been some big news with you recently off the court with your mm-hmm. engagement with CJ uh, you know, how how has that been with the kind of media whirlwind around that? Do you all still ever get to practice together, do any shooting competitions? How's that kind of look? Yeah, um, yeah, that's so exciting. He really threw me off, like big surprise. I had no idea at all. <laughs> so he did a really good job of planning everything. But um, we don't really get to get in the gym as much as we used to just with Tom being so busy and we're both coming back from injuries so like they try to limit our minutes like doing extra stuff inside the gym so yeah I, I mean I would love to have to go in there with him and maybe one night we will but our schedules have been so busy and we both kind of they're trying to like limit our loads and stuff but yeah we'll have to get back in the gym I've been wanting to get back in the gym with him so so who's the better shooter I don't know <laughs> He's he's still having a pretty good year. I'm still trying to get it together right now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he does his thing. I, I mean, I don't tell him this, but I mean, I'll let him have it. <laughs> he's a yeah. He is. He when he gets in the zone, he he can't miss. Which I can be like that too sometimes. But don't tell him. Don't tell him. But I'll, I'll give it to him. He's he's legit. <laughs> well. I, kind of throwing it back to the past um I know it's been a while now but um you had a really successful high school career in Kentucky mm-hmm. um finished 14th on the all-time scoring list with let's see 3,175 total points um how do you feel like you were able to have such success at the high school level yeah um at the high school level I really had a great team around me I mean moving to Harlan County and just the bond that I had with the girls on my team I mean, they made me feel like confident and they gave me that boost and belief in me to lead that team. So, I mean, I give a lot of it to them, but just having that confidence and just always being in the gym, working on my game and just, I mean, even just the offers and just like the belief I had in myself of having to play at the next level, I just knew it was going to have to happen. And I'm just going to have to show that and prove myself every night against each competitor that I have. So, yeah, I mean, that just gave me a lot of confidence, and it was just fun. I mean, just go out there, have fun, shoot the ball, just see what they give me. And, yeah, I think it just has to do with a lot of confidence and just keeping myself in the gym and just working out. 
uh, Blair, uh, Alex mentioned a little bit of the past going even further back, you know, both of your parents were extremely successful mm -hmm. high schools, uh, uh, college, you know, what was it like growing up with two, you know, big basketball influences? And what, did you kind of take coaching advice more from one of them than the other? Oh, goodness. <laughs> they were tough. I mean, growing up with two head coaches, it was, I mean, they're your biggest fans, but your biggest critics. So, I mean, sometimes they were tough to live with. <laughs> but I remember it was like in middle school, I was like, okay, when we go home, we can't talk about basketball. And that was kind of it. We, when we, we would just like get in arguments in the car, we'd be like, okay, we're not talking about basketball. And that was kind of it. So, like, we, when we, once we got home, we didn't speak about basketball, which I think really helped and it made us grow together. And um, in high school, I think they just kind of, they were hard on me, but they were, also my biggest fans and they kind of knew I was in control and that um, I did the work that I needed to do. But um, yeah, they were tough. I think my mom was definitely the toughest one. I mean, she's, she's hardcore. I mean, she knows her basketball. So I have a lot of respect, even my, I mean, also my dad, I mean, he has a lot of respect too, but yeah, my mom was scary. But when I got <laughs> my dad upset, yeah, I wasn't speaking back to him. I was just staying silent in the back of the car. <laughs> But yeah, they could be tough, but I mean, it's very rewarding, especially like when we won the region, it was very rewarding for our family and just the kind of bond and the emotions that we had at the end of that game. And I mean, it all pays off, but yeah, they definitely have my back and I respect everything that they do. And I learned everything that I know from them. So, I mean, if it wasn't for them and them coaching me hard, I wouldn't be who I am today. But yeah, growing up with two coaches, that's tough. <laughs> so have you ever considered after your playing career is over um kind of following in their footsteps and becoming a coach yourself I don't know they always tell me I mean they love coaching but they're like man it's a tough job Blair they're like I don't do something else <laughs> find something else to do but I mean I do a lot of um like skills clinics and I'll work out in like little girls and just like other players and I love doing that but it is tough. I mean, it can be tough. Just everything that goes into it. They put a lot of hard work into it. And even just seeing our college coaches, I mean, all the work that they have to put into it and stress that they go through. It's a lot of work. So, I mean, their basketball, their life is basketball 24-7. <laughs> I mean, it's a fun job, but it comes with a lot. So, I don't know. I mean, we'll still think about it. But I'm, I'm kind of excited to navigate my life after basketball and just kind of see what else life has to offer I mean basketball will always be one of the major things in my heart and things that I do but I think it's exciting to see what else I can do in this life maybe way down the road yeah maybe way <laughs> down the road if nothing else works out I mean I can always come back to basketball <laughs> uh speaking of coaching a little bit Blair you know with Kyra Elsey, she was an assistant coach for a decent mm -hmm. bit of your time here at UK. And a lot of times that assistant coach is kind of the person you can go to and talk to more so than the head coach who can be the more intimidating figure. What was it like as someone who saw her transition from that assistant coach role to the head coach who's now in charge of everything? Um, I think it's really cool. I mean, she was kind of like the first year she was thrown into the fire, but I mean, we all had belief in her and what she does. I mean, we know her so well, like you said, like she's the person that we always came to when things were hard, when um, we weren't at our best, we'd always come to her or even just, even now, she still wants to know everything about our lives outside of basketball, who our boyfriends are, what we're doing. So she always has her eye on us and she's always trying to get the gossip out of us. So <laughs> She, we have like a really cool relationship with our coach and I think her being assistant coach really helped that but yeah she's always in our business which <laughs> we love that but <laughs> it's Sounds a like a good fun. thing and a bad thing sometimes yeah it can be a good thing or a bad thing but she never brings it up she never puts it on us so <laughs> when we're in our office I mean she's always in our business she's so funny she's like mm -hmm, what y'all been doing today and I'm like oh my god <laughs> coach <laughs> not today not today but yeah and she's always trying to get our opinions on stuff like not even basketball just like how we see life how we see relationships and it's kind of cool because it starts different conversations and makes us learn more about our teammates and like how they see things and it always goes for a loop it's funny yeah it's fun she's a lot of fun so do you think that that helps though with like kind of the team 
like almost like a family feel to it whenever you do have like a head coach that's that involved oh yeah definitely because I think when it comes to like more serious conversations it's a lot easier to come to her and communicate with her so I mean I think that makes it a lot easier especially for me like we'll go into a serious meeting and we might bring up start with something a little lighter about like our life and stuff so it makes it a little bit easier to get into everything else yeah. uh, I had another question Blair but I gotta ask really quick I spotted the sweatshirt there is that a oh yeah the NIL merch is that what's going on there oh yeah I think this is his this is his NIL merch I honestly I wear it all the time and he thinks I mean he probably thinks that I'm I mean, I am supporting him, but I'm going to tell you, these are the comfiest sweatshirts <laughs> like, I've ever worn in my life. Like, people probably get tired of me wearing these. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm the biggest CJ Frederick fan, obviously. But like, yeah, when I wake up in the morning, my sweatshirt is hanging right there. I'm like, this is the comfiest sweatshirt ever. I'm just wearing this to the gym today. So it's so funny. It could be blanket. I'll just be walking so around with this sweatshirt on. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll go, I'll go out in public with it on sometimes. I'm like, CJ, this is so weird. If people don't think like, I'm your fiance or like we're dating or something like they probably think I'm so weird <laughs> <laughs> big UK girl yeah I'm like the biggest UK fan ever when I got in public especially CJ's fan the biggest CJ fan I'm like I hope people know that who I am because if not this is so awkward <laughs> now all you have to do is show them the ring and they'll know yeah I just gotta show them the ring now <laughs> <laughs> um go ahead go. Okay, so I was just going to kind of ask, when you were out last year with the injury, mm -hmm. did that kind of help you see more of, like, the behind-the-scenes coaching stuff um, that you maybe don't always see as a player, especially, like, in practice? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I spent a lot of time with Coach G. So um, she always took me in her room, and, like, we would do the scouts together, and she would make me take notes about, like, the opposing team players and, like, what goes into the scout. And one time I even got to make the scout and present it. So that was really cool. And it just, it really gave me a behind the scenes of like what they, like how much work they go through to make these scouts. And it just makes me appreciate it even more about like the work that they put into it because it takes hours and hours to do just like the smallest things. So yeah, I definitely appreciate it so much more. And then just um, viewing kind of like what the coaches view, like sometimes we don't always see like what we're doing wrong or how that may com come off like in the wrong way, but just like hearing like what the coaches have to say and seeing it from their view, it really made, started to make sense. So it makes it a little bit easier about when I go into practice or if I go into games, just like my smallest actions, how they can make a difference and from their perspective. Um, you know, speaking of things with different perspectives, Blair, you were the roommate of Ryan Howard, who's new now this <laughs> WNBA superstar, but I'm sure you don't exactly see her that way. What's it been like seeing her just shoot off into the stratosphere in the WNBA? Oh my goodness, she's insane. Like, um just the way that she plays and everything that she does, I'm like, you're just unbelievable, like legendary, <laughs> like iconic. Like I <laughs> I love Ryan. She's so amazing. But just like having that bond with her, I mean, like, like we still talk all the time and um, everything. We're on the phone after I got engaged and stuff. She's like, well, I'll send you my schedule so you'll know when to plan the wedding. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this is such a Ron Howard thing. I'm like, we have to revolve it all around her. The wedding has to be revolved all around her to make sure that she can <laughs> make it because she's always like that. But she's so funny. I'm like, of course. Duh. I'm like, just send me your schedule. She's like, oh, well yeah, these are my plans and that should work out. And I'm like, great, because you will definitely be in my wedding. <laughs> so, have to plan yeah, she's it. awesome, but she's doing great. And she just does run. I mean, she just goes out there and just plays basketball and has fun doing it and looks good doing it. So yeah, I'm so proud of her and just everything that she does. And she's just so fun and goofy to be around. And I like, I'm forever grateful for that friendship and sisterhood that we had. We went through a lot of ups and downs so it's I just like so proud of her just seeing all her hard work pay off and then so you were kind of there before and after the NIL era like started and now you were in it um how do you feel like that's like changed things um just kind of in like is it a positive in your mind is it a negative like how do you feel about it yeah I definitely think it's a positive um definitely in sports uh men's side it might be a little 
different just because a lot of times they bring in a lot more money and all that kind of stuff but for women's side there's really not no competition in it I feel like and um I just feel like we're enjoying it and just like all the deals that we get to do we try to bring our teammates into it and try to make everyone be a part of it and I think that's awesome and everyone always hops each other up shares their stuff and supports each other I think that's what it's all about and just making a little money while we play basketball I mean that's not a bad thing but I think a lot of people they just like doing stuff. I mean, it's not all about the money and everything, but we have fun selling our merch and uh, just being a part of other companies and getting to make those like networking and getting to meet new people and different sides of business and even learning things for the future, like taxes and all that kinds of stuff. Which yeah, I was going to say, it definitely oh. prepares you. It definitely yeah. helps prepare you earlier than like just having to deal with all that. Definitely. Stuff. And I think not- UK does a great job of just like, sending people in for like finances and like learning like what to do with our money and how to save it, what stocks to put it in and everything like that. So they definitely preparing us a lot more and just giving me a lot more insight for the next steps in my future and how to manage my money. So I think it's been awesome. Just the other day, Blair, we saw you post, uh, I think the sweet hottest salsa on your Instagram. Oh, the screen of the I Yeah, it looks like something straight off the Food Network. Can you talk about that a little bit and how that came about? Yeah, they're awesome. They're um, actually, I think they they sponsor um, women's basketball. So they just became a sponsor of women's basketball, which is awesome. And they were kind of looking for someone, an athlete, to kind of be like the head person of their um, business side for athletics. And um, I got the opportunity to do that. And they are just amazing. They like someone who's very home fill because Screaming Mimi's is, was originally from Kentucky and um, that's where it was made and the story that they told me is that they were like huge Screaming Mimi's fans like they loved the sauce like when they were boys and that's what they always did and then they sold the company and they were the ones to buy it so they bought the company and they're just trying to make it bigger and better and um, definitely make it like a Kentucky feel homegrown type feel and I was definitely I'm like, I'm a 606 girl. I'm homegrown. So we kind of fit just right. And I'm just showing off Kentucky, but yeah, they're awesome. And I love their salsa. You should try it. (laughs) (laughs) Nice plug. (laughs) Let me give me some brownie points. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, they're fun to work with. Well, like you said, you're a 606 girl. And I'm sure like the majority of our listeners are from Kentucky. We have so many Kentucky questions we could ask you. So we kind of came up with this idea to do a segment where we'll just throw a couple Kentucky things at you. um, And you can name which one you like better. Kind of like a lightning round. You don't have to explain if you want to, you can, but uh, it'll be pretty quick here. Okay. All right. Blue versus white. Blue. Uh, Churchill Downs versus Keeneland. Uh, Keeneland. Harlan County versus Lexington. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one. Okay. Tough one. We can circle back around. We can circle. Let's circle back around. Okay. <laughs> Rupp Arena or Memorial Coliseum? Mm, I'm going to have to go with. Rupp. Okay. And ale eight or sweet tea? Oh, sweet tea. Okay. Easy. You're much more confident on that one. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, easy. Sweet tea, that's, that's the most confident ever. I have a sweet tea like every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice I don't know. Alex, do you have anything else or? Um, no, I think just the last thing, just because I know we probably will get um, a lot of maybe middle school or high school kids that may aspire to play at the next level. Mm-hmm. Um, can we just kind of finish out by talking a little bit about what that recruiting journey is like? Um, just kind of if you can give them a little bit of advice for um, maybe what to expect during that or what mm-hmm. can help them. Yeah, definitely just exposure, exposure, exposure. Like I'm from a small town. I mean, not many coaches are going to come to those small towns unless they know who you are so you definitely have to put yourself out there you have to get into a lot of AU tournaments get on a good team where a lot of college coaches come and just get that exposure I mean one big thing for me is just like your priorities like I know it was tough for me as a kid having to miss sometimes like my best friend's birthday parties or having to miss 
doing some like summer vacation, like when it's on the wrong day or just like the little things that you really want to go to and they seem really big when you're little. But sometimes you have to miss out on that stuff for an even better journey ahead of you. So I think don't always focus on like what you're missing out on, but just like focus on what's to come in the future if you do miss out on that. And I mean, your friends are always, if you're, they're your true friends, they're always going to be around. Like my best friend who I live with right now, she, I had to miss all kinds of stuff with her and she just always gives me down the road. I even had to miss a Disney trip with her. So (laughs) she still gives me down the road, but I mean, like, here we are, we're still best friends. We still have these amazing moments, these amazing trips on down the road. But sometimes you had to miss out on that kind of stuff to finish out your journey and to experience even bigger and better things for yourself. So definitely exposure, 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 and just stay in the gym as much as you can. For so. sure. Thank you so much, Blair, for uh, yeah. being the first guest here on the opening podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is awesome. For kicking things off. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate it. That was great. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> getting into the South Carolina matchup tonight. Um, what are your initial thoughts on it? Um, obviously, this is a team with, uh, I think, yeah, 24 straight wins. Their last loss is to actually to us in the SEC tournament last year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what's your initial thoughts on this game? I would say, you know, BBN, if you're religious, say your prayers for this Kentucky women's basketball team because this one could get ugly quick. Uh, you know, against LSU – I can't fault Kentucky too much. LSU uh, is a great team, and they Kentucky showed strides there. They only lost by 19, which is a lot still, but it could have been much worse. Um, I think they need to capitalize and realize where they had success against LSU and try and make that a more consistent thing against South Carolina. I, I, you know, there's there's only so much you can say against the number one team in the nation. I, what, what are your thoughts, Alex? Um, I'm right there with you. I mean, this team is tough. It's tough for anybody. I mean, we could be talking about UConn women's basketball right now, and it still would, they, I think they would have the same opinion that this would be a tough win for them to get. Um, South Carolina is just that good. And I think everybody kind of knows it this year. Um, They've been unanimous number one all season long for a reason. Um, They've already beat multiple top ranked teams. So I definitely think the big thing I think for tonight in Kentucky is just to show signs of growth even though it may not look the best um kind of just d- erase the scoreboard from your mind and just go out there and take care of the ball do things like that um focus on taking good shots um honestly my big thing is turnovers like can we take care of the ball against a team like this who i mean they're averaging 16 and a half forced turnovers a game and um, we have been really great at forcing turnovers as a team. So can we force the turnovers and take care of the ball ourselves still against a team like this? For sure. Yeah, I would say my biggest thing to look for if we're going off that is guard play. Um, with Cardoso and Boston, you're, you're just not going to get anything going down there. I mean, that's six foot five and six foot seven. Our yeah. tallest player is six foot three. Uh, you know, it's going to come down to Robin Benton, Jada Walker, and Maddie Shear. Um, I need to see something from them tonight. And if they don't, this could end up being a 45-point blowout. So we've obviously seen they're capable against other teams. So I think it's going to be a lot about maybe this is a night where they can get back some of that perimeter shooting confidence. Um, you know, if they can shoot well against South Carolina, they can shoot well against anybody. Absolutely. And like you said, just because of their height, Um, I think when I was looking at least 10 of their players for South Carolina were over six foot tall. So, I mean, compared to us, that's a very, very large team. So I think definitely outside shooting and not trying to force it down low either. Um, I don't think we're going to have much luck in the post or around, um, the rim. So hopefully more so focusing on getting good looks on the outside. Um, I'm sure they've been game planning plays to get good looks on the outside, but can we execute that and can we knock them down when it matters? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the bigs respond with Asia Petty and Nia Leverett or Adebola. I mean, they're going to have to box out with all their might. Yeah. Uh, if they don't, South Carolina will get a second shot on every single possession, essentially. Absolutely. So it, that'll be huge. And, uh, you know, we'll be interested to see how Kyra Elsie responds after the game. We'll, I would still predict, if I had to, uh, somewhere between a 20 to 30 point loss. 
However, like you said, it's about taking those small steps. And even if you're losing, you're playing better than the game before. Absolutely. And then honestly, how are you, how we respond after. So, I mean, I'm right there with you. I do think if I had to predict um, what this game would be, I think anything less than 20 points, honestly, is a very positive outlook yeah. at the end, um, just because South Carolina is that good. Mm -hmm. um, but I think how do we respond after um, do we hang our heads after that? Do mm -hmm. we come back and respond um, by, I mean, coming together as a team? That's what you would hope to see. But I mean, again, what it does to your confidence, this would be, what is it? Five, is it five straight if we lose tonight? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Five yeah so, I mean, that, that kind of can kill your confidence, but it also, I mean, if you respond to it in the right way and look at it as progress against two, teams that really could I mean South Carolina is definitely the favorite to win it all this year so mm -hmm. if you can come out and show positives against that hopefully as a team you keep your head held high after and um, kind of go into the rest of the season um, with a different outlook for sure and I think that's uh, really all that can be said on it can well, agree more. Uh, thank you all for listening to the first episode of know her name podcast. Uh, we're figuring it out, you know, one step at a time here, but hopefully everybody enjoyed and we'll continue to provide you with a uh, Kentucky women's basketball coverage. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. Again, we want to thank everyone here for joining the know her name podcast. Uh, for our visual watchers, you might have noticed that this uh, wasn't maybe not the prettiest looking uh, podcast that we've done, but it'll look great on, or it'll listen, sound great on Spotify and iTunes, however you uh, consume your podcasts. The, uh, the plan here with us is to do this every two weeks to kind of recap what has been going on with the team, maybe look forward a little bit like we've done today. Uh, we're always going to be fitting in these, you know, 10 to 20 minute interviews from a player or a coach, kind of whoever we can get um, moving forward. So with that in mind, we appreciate everyone who listens, downloads, what have you. Uh, and we're excited to continue to bring you this throughout the rest of the season. Um, you know, leave comments, suggestions, however you all uh, think we should maybe change things up. We're always uh, willing to listen to things. But like I said, next time, uh, things will look a lot better visually. Maybe we'll even have, uh, you know, some graphics, a little intro song. I'm not sure. Um, so stay on the lookout for all that stuff. But again, we thank you all very much. and We'll catch you next time.